Preventive maintenance is the most important type of maintenance because it seeks to avoid costly incidents at a later stage. Planning for preventive maintenance starts at the design stage. It continues through acquisition of components and plant construction and preventive maintenance needs to be taken into account when drawing up the plant's insurance policies. Your image of preventive maintenance must not be a man moving through the plant with his tools. Preventive maintenance must be must be structured and must take account of all possible incidents on the site. During the next slides, we'll go through a preventive maintenance checklist for a solar project. There are 10 questions to be considered from a preventive maintenance point of view during plant design. First, are the radiation parameters on the site and the required tilt of the modules well understood? Over-optimistic performance expectations from the site will lead to over-optimistic economic expectations. Second, has a proper shadowing study been carried out that balances shading losses against plot optimization? For sites using sun trackers, the shading study is an important determinant of plant performance and it should be organised alongside a wind study. Third, the salinity and humidity of the local atmosphere need to be taken into account as that can influence the life of the selected fixings and support structures. Fourth, the quality of the soil needs to be looked at to see if there are soil components that will attack the concrete or erode fixings. Fifth, all equipment to be installed outdoors must have minimum protection for outdoor conditions. Normally that protection level, level would be to the IP65 standard. Sixth, check that the important components are protected by voltage discharges. Seventh, check that all control cabinets have appropriate alarm systems, especially those containing the inverters or transformers. Eighth, check the dimensions of electrical cabinets are large enough to dissipate heat from the devices inside during hot summer months. Ninth, check cable sections to avoid possible voltage drops and lastly it's a good design practice to distribute important elements across several isolated rooms to avoid a total loss of production in the case of fire or flood. In choosing components speci special care should be taken over the main and the most expensive elements in the solar planet, uh, plant, the modules and inverters. For the modules there are three issues to consider. Are the modules properly approved by a certified laboratory? Do they meet local na and national standards? If the plant is in Europe, the relevant standard would normally be EN 61.215. Third, are the modules class two? For the inverters, we only have to ask two questions. First, do they achieve a reasonable European efficiency of between 94 and 96%? It's important to check the European efficiency of the inverter as well as the normal efficiency as the European efficiency takes account of the load on the inverter. Second, does the inverter have a suitable galvanic protection of at least a thickness of 80 microns? If not, does the inverter have an alternative protection that's at least as effective? The level of guarantee and offer from the module manufacturers should also be taken into account. Guarantees on possible module manufacturing defects vary from two to five years. The length of guarantee and offer should be checked. Nearly all solar module manufacturers guarantee a degradation of less than 20% over 25 years. However, some manufacturers offer a guarantee on degradation of less than 10% after 10 years. That's a better guarantee. Guarantees are particularly important for thin film modules as they can suffer strong initial degradation. In fact, some manufacturers don't offer any degradation guarantee on their thin film modules. You should be careful to check that the guarantees against degradation fit with the planned life of your solar plant. It's important to check whether the manufacturer or the distributor is offering the guarantee. Where the distributor is operating as the guarantor, it's important to use a distributor with a legal presence in the country where the plant is being built. If the distributor has no legal presence in that country, verify that they have a right to sell in that country. 
any breach of the regulations will have implications for the enforceability of the chain of guarantees that the plant re relies upon. Verbal guarantees are not enough. All guarantees need to be properly detailed in the contract signed with the manufacturer or distributor. For inverters, check that the guarantees can be extended, if desirable, at reasonable cost. A replacement servant service within 24 to 28 hours, backed up by a helpline that's open over weekends as well as weekdays, may be the most important service that you look for from the inverter manufacturer. There are three issues with preventive maintenance implications to be considered when you are receiving components. A visual inspection of all modules received, or at least a sample of them. A classification of modules by power using the manufacturer's class list. And whether all components have been stored in suitable conditions prior to assembly and installation. Here are the main issues that must be covered by plant insurance. Atmospheric phenomena electrical damages, thefts, production losses, public liability, and the level of excess. Preventive maintenance during plant operation starts with a good preventive maintenance program. Next, staff should complete comprehensive preventive maintenance training. Good monitoring and surveillance for inc incident detection is vital. Spare parts need to be available, accessible, and correctly stored. A meteorological station to ensure good weather forecasts is an important tool in preventive maintenance and good local or remote security and surveillance systems are important. We'll look at these issues in more details over the next slides. In designing a preventive maintenance program, it's important to define the maintenance tasks and how regularly they should be carried out. Those tasks, their frequency and dates for accomplishment should be defined in a table that will also provide a log of progress on each task. A more complex table than the one shown here could include notifications or alarms from the monitoring system and a column for the latest date by which a task must be done. In this slide we can find a list of features that generally require preventive maintenance. There's a check on the earthing systems tightening of electrical connections in control boxes or control rooms, a check of voltage dischargers and the state of cables, checking the dirtiness of modules and checks for the appearance of hotspots on those modules, verification that the required maintenance by the electrical companies in the transformer centre has been completed and if there are sun trackers, a check on their deviation from the optimal position in relation to the sun and records of tightening and lubrication of moving components. Follow-up checks on all preventive maintenance tasks in the programme are important, with individual records for each task classified by component. In the example of a sun tracker record, completion dates for each task and whether the task was routine or a response to an incident are included, together with observations on the detection of any malfunction. The person with overall responsibility for preventive maintenance must have an understanding of both electrical and solar power issues. If the plant is using sun trackers, an understanding of electromechanical issues should be added to that list. If the maintenance of inverters or certain trackers is not outsourced, then it's vital that the personnel are properly trained in the maintenance tasks. Accurate meteorological measures are very important, particularly in plants with sun trackers, where the wind can have a major effect on performance. Many sun tracker systems will place modules in a protective position once they receive a warning signal from a central anemometer. A wind sensor for every sun tracker is the best solution, but that can be an expensive one. For every potential incident, you will need to establish an incident detective detection mechanism. In your planning, you should rank every potential incident according to its probability and damage it might produce. For example, a fire in the control or supervision room is not very probable, but the potential damage is severe. Therefore, a detect detection mechanism for that incident is a high priority. Breaks in the 
grid connection are often the responsibility of the electricity company that the solar plant supplies. However, these breakdowns can sometimes pass unnoticed by the electricity company or perhaps even be ignored by them. So a detection mechanism that alerts a person with responsibility at the solar plant whenever there is a disconnection from the grid is important. If the breakdown is not properly noted or recorded, it could affect the compensation that the solar plant will receive.